So ladies and gents, thanks for being here. This microphone is for the camera. It's not for you guys because they, we, we'd have feedback and problems like that. So I'm going to have to talk loud and Jake will have to talk loud. And we'll have to ask people that when we're talking to try not to talk so that everybody else can hear what it is that we're saying. I think we have a relatively important message that we want to uh, transmit to you all today. And we want to hear the message that you may have for us so that we can answer questions and or take notes and adjust our uh, trajectory as necessary. Real quickly, uh, as we start, uh, I, again, I welcome you guys into taking time on your Tuesday evening uh, here tonight. My name is Matt Daniel. I'm the chairman of the Spirit of VMI PAC. Thank, thank you for that. But we have a we have a, a team that's here. Unfortunately, not everybody on our team could make it here because of graduations. Because several, uh, probably half of our staff or half of our committee is out of state. You know, as as far as up in uh, Connecticut and down in Florida. But they're here with us, and they're probably here right now. And, and they'll they'll probably give me you know hell for how I'm presenting right now too. So good to see you guys uh, here tonight. Um, so our agenda here, and I'll give some thanks here uh, in a second, but agenda here is we'll do this sort of welcome, talk about administrative stuff here quickly, and then Jake and I will talk very quickly. We've got about 30 minutes to go through what, why, when, and kind of how, and take questions, and we'll do that for about 30 minutes. And then we're gonna bring on our guest of honor, who I want you guys, when, when he comes on, I want you to give him a round of applause because he is probably the best cross-domain uh, supporter of VMI, the biggest voice that's outside of the own, our own VMI community, and he's not even a VMI guy. Uh, so uh, w when he comes on board, we'd like lots of support uh, for him. So Jim Bacon will talk probably from about uh, 7 to about 7.30, and then we'll wrap with some sort of housekeeping uh, things that we need to... Uh, to, to talk about and uh, and some stuff at, at the end and take uh, further questions and then close it up so that Cannon and Draw can open up their doors to the regular community at, uh, at about 8 p.m. or so, 2000 for you non-military types. Um, so so uh, thank you, I got some thank yous to, uh, to give out here. I wanna thank uh, Cannon and Draw for your uh, hospitality here tonight. I want, I want to thank uh, the, the people who are setting up the IT for us, uh, Bob Morris, who is also responsible for the resurgence or the rebirth of the VMI Cadet newspaper, and he brought some of those with us today. And he may be able to answer some questions about that. He is also the man responsible for the Barnes and Thornburg uh, contract lawsuit that's going on right now, too. So he's fighting the good fight. You know, we're sort of uh, crime families, separate crime families trying to go same way, same day to try to attack uh, the problem, if you will. Um, uh, Hugh Bryan, who is our communications director for the, uh, the Spirit of EMI PAC. Mark Carroll, who, uh, who organized this meeting. He's right over there. So thank you, Mark. Jeff Hill, who's the bouncer over there in the cowboy hat. He's also a member of the pack. Marty Mason, who's one of our uh, uh, chief uh, fundraisers. Uh, Shelby Rusher. Uh, Henry Loving, who, uh, who provided the chicken. Oh, you know, we like to support his business whenever we can, but I want to thank him for the great chicken that he, uh, he provides us, the dinners that he provides us. Uh, Dave Tingley, who, who donated the plaque up there that we'll do the raffle for later on. And then uh, uh, Jake Spivey, obviously, who's uh, sort of the right-hand man scribe and much of the energy behind what it is we do at the VMI, the uh, Spirit of VMI Pack. And if I'm forgetting anybody else, I am sorry. We'll thank uh, Jim Bacon for being here when he when he comes uh, when he when he comes up. Okay, so who are we? And most of you know who we are. We're a group of uh, VMI alumni, most of the class of 1985, just because we got pissed off first. At least we had a co cohesive group that got mad first of being called racist. Uh, and because we were, we were being called racist without any proof, uh, without any way to answer back, we, just, we, we, we commiserated. And on December 28th, we got together and said, uh, let's start something. And it took us about a month and a half to figure out what it is this thing that we wanted is to start. 
Uh, that sentence didn't make any sense, but we were trying to figure out what it is that we were going to do. And by the end of, uh, end of February, we had decided that we'd become a political action committee and that we would incorporate as a political action committee. I've got two lawyers from uh, 2011 and 2012 that are here, uh, Sharif Gray and uh, Quinn Adams. I forgot to, to recognize you guys, but please, you know, raise your hands. Th th those guys... Those guys correct us often on the calls. They tell us, hey, you, got, you can't use so many swear words, and you, know, you, you, you got to say it this way, and I'm sorry, Matt, you can't attack like that, uh, or, or things like that. But, so correct me if I'm wrong, but we were incorporated as a 527, is that right? Um, and, uh, and not a 501c3 type or organization. Really kind of... Um, uh, foreign to me, all of that language. I just know it allows us to do what it is uh, that, that we do, to raise money, do it legally, not get in trouble, and protect the people who donate to what it is that we're trying to do. Shelby, did I recognize you also? Okay, okay, uh, good to go, so uh, thanks on that. So we, we started in, uh, in, in mid-February uh, as uh, trying to pursue the legal entity that we were uh, on March 1st. We officially launched as the political action committee and started uh, and started collecting donations, seeking donations, and we've done pretty well so far. I mean, not not well enough. It, 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 we obviously wanted to to do more and raise more money, but uh, but we've done well and garnered a lot of support, a lot of emotional support, and a really a, gr a grassroots support structure uh, to uh, to help us out. Um, and, and so we're continuing to uh, to to press on that. I'm going to pass the mic to Jake to tell us how we got here. So most of y'all here know the, uh, the times that we're living in, and uh, really it starts from, from our perspective with uh, the alumnus who's in the executive mansion who in his youth made uh, some, some uh, mistakes like we all do in our youth. Um, and unfortunately, he got called out when he'd already reached the governor's office. So uh, ever since then, Governor Northam has been on this crusade, if you will, to try and correct that past wrong. And in doing so, he has chosen as an object of his ire uh, unfounded allegations as a cudgel to try and beat the institute into corrective behavior but it's difficult correct behavior that's not flawed or wrong um, compounding the problem for us uh, for the institute uh, was the horrible tragic death of george floyd which led to a great deal of unrest last year um, that simply exacerbated the perceptions that allegations made in the post uh, were actually true and I think most of us could speak to our own anecdotes about how we lived our lives uh, what BMI taught us about honor integrity humility and respect and understand that those uh, allegations are foreign to what BMI men and women believe BMI should be about um, yeah sure so the other aspect that uh, upset us was the summary dismissal of General P uh, from the Institute in the uh, dishonorable, if you will, uh, and uh, unfounded way that he was uh, told to resign. Um, it, it was a sort of a, a summary dismissal that was uh, inappropriate given his tremendous efforts in leading the school for so long and somebody of that stature and the way he had conducted himself, the things he had done for the school should never have been allowed to happen in that he was shown the door in such a prompt, uh, swift fashion. Um, we recognize that we are living in different times and so we understand that changes are due uh, over the course of any period in time. When, I was, when Matt and I were at school, there were only 13 academic majors at the school. Uh, there certainly are more now. There were no minors. There certainly are more now. There are organizations that promote um, uh, 
good behavior and whatnot at the school that were not in existence when we were there. So we recognize changes will be made, but the sort of swift and prompt and undiscussed method in which a lot of these changes are being made are, we believe, uh, not, not well done. And then finally, the other aspect that we uh, believe is central to the core of being a political action committee are comments within, uh, from individuals within the state legislature who seem to feel as though the state's appropriation is something to be held over top of uh, the Institute's head and used as a way to affect change. And that is uh, very disturbing to us as it should be to all of y'all because of the um, large proportion relative to the other uh, state supported schools uh, in which we rely on the state's appropriation not only for general funding throughout the years but then for also capital improvements and capital projects going forward to make sure that VMI stays a top flight institution uh, uh, recruiting you know broad perspectives of students from across the country. So um, I think that's about that that's about it for where we got to where we are. Okay. I appreciate it. Everybody should have a, a, a sheet when you walked in. It's kind of a crib sheet for us uh, and maybe for you all too to jog your thoughts and or ideas with regards to what it is we do, some fundamental concepts that uh, that are true and uh, and then what our goals, objectives, and or strategy uh, would be. So um, at the risk of looking at a piece of paper, um, we put this together with our staff to try to encapsulate the direction that we're going and to, be to, to best in a short uh, presentation to explain and generate questions from you, explain to you, generate questions from you on what it is that, what it is you guys are doing. Where, you know, you're collecting donations, where's the money going? What activity are, are, are you doing? So let's start real quickly with uh, fundamentals to recognize. Virginia politics have, have, have changed and they haven't changed in the way that VMI um, teaches. So they're at odds with each other and VMI used to be the darling of the state sort of not that way right now. And we're trying to help that through political action as much as we possibly can. VMI is indeed good. It provides tremendous ROI, but fewer fewer people care because of the first bullet, because less people hear about VMI uh, in a positive light or hear about it at all. A pact to support VMI should have happened a long time ago, probably 20 years ago or more, when we were the darlings of the state, but we got complacent uh, and we didn't do our due diligence and didn't anticipate the turn of politics that's happened to uh, to, to VMI and uh, to the state and, uh, and, and and to institutions like VMI. It's not just VMI. Uh, <clears throat> but now that we do have it, it's long overdue. But now that we do have it, we are here to ensure political accountability, to fact check politicians, committees, and the media, to be vocal in doing that, to educate politicians and the public on things VMI. I mean, VMI is a weird place. You know, and it's hard to explain to people the, the, the context. If you don't understand, then you just don't understand. So, so, so two quick points on that. One is over 50% of the state's senators and delegates are not native Virginians. The power center of Virginia politics has moved out of Richmond where Ross McKenzie and Ed Grimsley used to be editors of the Times Dispatch in Central Virginia got its news from Richmond because of where the General Assembly is located, and now it's up in Northern Virginia. So there's a greater dissonance and distance between how VMI used to be representative when people like Bob Patterson and Rick Clarkson also resided in Richmond in the center of, of political unity, if you will, not, not, not party unity, but just where it took place was here in town, and that's the center has moved up to Northern Virginia. Okay, thanks, Jake. Um, we also are here to prevent political amnesia, which happens a lot, you see, uh, in the news today. Uh, we also think that it's uh, fundamental to recognize that politicians respond to reward, and they also respond to the opposite. 
Uh, so we're here to be able to provide both where it makes sense. We're here to be able to provide both where it makes sense. And our situation is a long-term situation. So it's, you know, things aren't going to happen and turn right away. It's a, this is a long slog. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, all those uh, metaphors are true with this. So it will take several cycles to see maybe the change that we seek, but we're hoping to see some change uh, relatively soon, but probably not the change that we seek. So we must be patient and we must be diligent in this, uh, in this endeavor. So what is it we're doing? Where is, where is the effort going and, 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 and what are the things that we're, the actions that we're taking? Uh, we are promoting and educating and reinforcing that VMI is good. That's our slogan, VMI is, is good because the media and the legislature, and honestly, um, sometimes I question our own uh, VMI, the VMI recognizes that VMI is good. There's, you know, everybody makes mistakes and there are, there are things that, that uh, aren't perfect at, at, at any institution, at any place, at any person, but VMI stands for good, does good, and has done good uh, since it was founded. So, so we, we, we are pushing that out through communication means as much as we can and to politicians uh, wherever we can so that they can be educated as such. We're educating uh, the uh, friends and supporters and followers of the Spirit of VMI Political Action Committee with regard to Virginia politics and how they affect VMI, why you should get out to vote, what it is, who are the people that are carrying uh, the message that will help VMI and who are those people who are not. So sometimes it may mean getting out of our comfort zone and supporting people who we would not normally support. VMI, the, the spirit of VMI is not a political party pack. The spirit of VMI is an issues pack, issues-based pack. Uh, it just so happens that most of the people that we will support uh, will be from one party uh, just because that's the way you know, they believe and they vote. But it does not mean we won't support uh, politicians and reward politicians from other parties uh, if they are supportive of VMI and especially strategically. So th those are, are uh, that is a, a principle and uh, we are working on that right now. We provide timely and strategic endorsements for the General Assembly and Executive Branch candidates. We just did four uh, interviews of the Republican gubernatorial candidates for uh, Glenn Youngkin, for Kirk Cox, for Pete Snyder, and for Amanda Chase, uh, and broadcast those. We invited the Democrats to do the same and got a pushback from Jennifer Carroll Foy that she will interview with us after their um, convention and, um, and nothing from Terry McAuliffe. So we'll wait and see to after June 8th and they have their uh, selection mechanism and try to get one of those two or whoever wins the, uh, the Democrat um, candidacy to come and interview us. And, and we will support, uh, I don't think we will financially support, but we will support the executive branch uh, candidates uh, that we think are worthy of, of supporting. Um, and we can help do that by bringing out the vote as much as we can for those, by, uh, by uh, uh, by affecting the media as much as we can, by providing media as much as we can for the people that we will support. Financially, we're not set up to help finance a governor's race. We're more, you know, delegates are about our speed and about what we're going for, and that's where the real work is done uh, anyway. So that, th that's another uh, effort that we are uh, ongoing in identifying those delegates that will be strategic delegates for us to be able to have some effect with. Now, we talked about this a little bit before. Though the PAC has enjoyed fundraising success, you know, it is our goal and it has been our practice so far to remain frugal, to protect and, uh, and contain the finances that have been generously donated to us, uh, to use them the way that they were intended to be used to have political action um, in places that we think need, need to, uh, there needs to be pressure put. Reward supporters of VMI and vice versa. We talked about that, uh, and we talked a little bit about this. But politicians, you know, they, they want money. They think they want money. Well, what they really want is votes. So if we can get to understand uh, each uh, each district, and, and we're building our pack around that, building subject matter expertise in each district, 
uh, that is strategic, especially strategic districts, uh, that uh, with subject matter expertise on what the issues of that district are and those people who are running and their opinions and their practice on how they uh, affect and or vote on VMI issues, what their, what their uh, practice would be toward VMI issues, that will help us then uh, control and bring out the vote for them uh, more effectively than, uh, than not. Strategic goal for us is to uh, flip the house uh, to, to start and then in 2023 to flip, this, to flip the Senate. And falling short of that, uh, trying to find the strategic candidates in, uh, in committees, let's say the, uh, the Appropriations Committee the, or the Senate Finance Committee that affects uh, donate, not donations, but appropriations from the state to, to VMI and any strings that may be attached to those uh, is, our, is our goal. So intermediate and, uh, and, and long-term goals. Jake, I know you probably want to do some of these here. That's right. Um, we talked about the, the get out to, uh, to vote, the turnout effort, and then, uh, and then we are diligently watching and waiting for the Barnes and Thornburg uh, audit results that are supposed to be delivered on the first, on or about the first, to, to see the language in there and some of the recommendations. I, th I think it's gonna be bad, folks. I, it, that if you guys got that email from, uh, from the, the alumni agencies, it, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be bad and uh, it's gonna make a lot of us you know, pretty angry, I think. Um, uh, what we're looking, and we know that, so what we're looking for is some of the more subtle language as in suggestions to change the conduct or the makeup of the, uh, of the Board of Visitors. Maybe to go away from uh, mo uh, the, the number, that's right now, Board of Visitors, 16 members on the board, 12 have to be alums, and then there's a variety of people who are on in and out of state. But if there's language to changing the makeup of the Board of Visitors, it could change to many uh, people who are not, or many more people who are not uh, alumni and that would not be in our favor I don't think so any comment on any of this stuff Jake no, I, don't think so. I think what we have is uh, is uh, is some time to take questions so given that given the paper and the things that we're talking about I know that you you're you're wondering about what it is that we're doing how we're doing it we're not paid so nobody on our staff is paid um, we, we're all volunteers we have hired some people to do some work for us, but on 1099 type of basis. Yes, sir, Mark. Is the contribution It's not right now. May I repeat the question? Yeah, uh, thank you for that. But so the, the question was, are contributions to the PAC uh, uh, tax deductible? And as of right now, uh, we are not in a tax deductible status. Clifford. So the answer is yes, it goes across the board. We've spoken with uh, representatives from the foundation, from the alumni association, from the alumni agencies, the board of visitors, um, members of the boards that govern the Kita Club uh, Foundation and alumni association, and the superintendent. So we have, we have been very transparent First of all, with the superintendent and certain members of the foundation and KEDEC club in particular, it's an easy uh, discussion because they're classmates. Um, for members of the association, foundation, and KEDEC club boards, we've engaged with them. Uh, we have provided correspondence to them and been open about you know, what we are fretful of, what we would like to see, what we're hopeful for, but also what we're, you know, what we what we're careful about not wanting to see. Um, some representatives on either the boards or the organizations have been, uh, I would say, more open-minded than other people have. Nobody has absolutely positively pushed back and said, no, stop, don't do this. Have gotten a couple 
responses like that from alumni, but nobody from those organizations. Thank you. Next question? Yep, Chris. So <clears throat> this, yes, so, so Chris was asking about when General P was asked to leave, um, was there any way to stop that? And uh, based on all the people I've spoken with, it transpired in this manner. Um, Governor Northam discussed with his chief of staff that he felt like it was time for General P to leave and so the governor's chief of staff contacted the president of the Board of Visitors and instructed him to let General P know that the governor had lost his you know confidence in his ability to lead the Institute and that General P should leave now the governor had no actual authority to dismiss General P but General P, understanding his relationship as head of the school, took that information and, and submitted his letter of recognition to the Board of Visitors. Any, one more question before we have uh, Jim Bacon on. Okay, Matt. Matt. We are a state, uh, well, I, I think there's different ways to, su to support. Uh, I, financially, probably not. I think um, as, as far as uh, canvassing and or helping with, uh, with, uh, with media and coverage, probably yes. I mean, this is, we are one domino, and we're one small domino in a big line of dominoes. We're hoping to push it in the other direction and jam up that line of dominoes that's falling against us. Uh, so we will do what we can. Our primary role, though, is the state of Virginia and the, uh, and the legislation that may harm VMI. Not only the, the appropriations, but also the strings that come attached with the appropriations. To the, to, to the extent that federal legislation would have an adverse impact on state legislation that might affect VMI, I think that's what Matt's trying to say, is we'd be supportive in that manner, but in terms of Monetary, we're, we're trying to remain state-centric. Right. Yeah. Okay, we'll take. Uh, okay, Kyle. Okay, yeah. Go ahead, real quick. I got to bring uh, Jim on here a second. Well, I think you know probably the main thing is to spread the word, and and, and to spread the word via social media as much as you can and or are allowed to do. Um, donations are always, you know, appreciated, and, and, and the, the more donations that we get, the more effect that we can probably have when it comes to really trying to do some, uh, some, some good with a specific candidate in a specific race. Uh, but I'd say those two, two things probably, and then when we call on you to help uh, spread, spread the word or sit on a committee, then, then do that. Regularly communicate with us, ask us questions, give us recommendations, those things are good. The website is uh, HTTPS. The S is important, I guess. Um, <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, uh, colon slash slash the spirit of VMI dot org. No breaks in the in the uh, in the name. The spirit. So the is important too. The spirit of VMI dot org is the uh, is the website. And we have one more question back there. Then I'm bringing on Jim Bacon. And I want you guys to hold any questions that you have. Well, actually, you could ask him questions, but then if you have more for us afterwards, we have some time after Jim Bacon has a presentation. Thanks, Clint. I appreciate it. It's good to see you, man. So, I, I don't know. I don't know how many of you have been following uh, the the social media and the, uh, the non-traditional media about, uh, about VMI. 
I would encourage you to go to baconsrebellion.com. Is that, it's not the Bacon's Rebellion. It's baconsrebellion.com and read the great support of, uh, of our really good friend and my personal hero, Jim Bacon. He's here to talk to you a little bit right now, Jim Bacon. for the camera. Um, thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, the applause. Uh, trust me, that it's very rare that I, I, I get that. Uh, uh, certainly not at home. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I'm delighted to be here and, 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 pr and partake of this event. Can you all hear me okay? Do I even need this? Or? Yeah, exactly. That's for the camera. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So here's my message to you uh, today. You... VMI is not alone. You have a lot of friends out there. You may not know it. We may not be, you know, make themselves visible because we're all fighting our own battles. But trust me, you have a lot of people who see what's going on and they care and they're behind you. So take heart in that. In fact, uh, what you're part of, I think, is I think you're part of a growing movement that could ultimately begin reshaping the political economy in this country. And that is what I call the alumni rebellion. You're not the only group of alumni who are really, really, really mad and not going to take it anymore. Uh, there are similar groups at Washington Lee, and first I think they were probably the first one to form. And then I, I'm a Wahoo, so uh, I belong to a group called Jefferson Council. Uh, at, at UVA and uh, w we formed as well and so that's at least three organizations here in Virginia now the interesting thing is uh, I've talked to other people who have kind of a national view of, of campus politics and there's a lot of uh, publications out there that follow campus politics now and as far as they know no other state has this going on um, I think that part of it can be traced back to the fact that uh, let's face it, our, our uh, higher ed institutions, a lot of them can trace themselves back to the era of uh, the antebellum era and the era of slavery, uh, the era of Jim Crow, uh, and were to one degree associated uh, with all those things. And we have had to adapt and, and, and change our institutions, and maybe not as fast as some people would, be, would like. My concern, and I think the concern that you all should have, is that, yeah, we do need to change uh, and recognize the new realities of, of, uh, of race in America today, but we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. There are many things that are worth preserving and mer worth saving, and we're going to fight to do that. So, um, Alumni have never really been a political force before, at least not as long as I've been around. And uh, I've been around a while. So I've been covering uh, politics in Virginia for uh, business and politics for about 40 years. And uh, my sense in, is that alumni basically saw themselves as supporters and cheerleaders of their institution. They loved their institution. They got involved. They wanted to give money. They wanted to you know, see their institution thrive and prosper and, uh, uh, and, and become more prestigious and, and, and do a good job of what they do. And alumni organizations uh, are, have tended to be very successful organizations. Uh, I'm sure that VMI has a tremendously high rate of participation of alumni and its alumni organizations, but they always tended to be non-political. Uh, even non-political in the sense of what's going pl the uh, uh, politics within the university, they've always been kind of neutral players and say our job is just to go out and uh, 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 have reunions and help our alumni have fun and uh, and go out and raise money <coughs> and uh, put a good face on the university and say positive things and you know so we all feel good. And that's pretty much where alumni organizations are all stuck today. Uh, and what's happened over time, and I speak mainly about UVA, which I know the best, but I suspect similar things have gone on. VMI might be different, and I don't know. So, but these are questions to ask. Um, at UVA, the alumni organization almost became an adjunct to the university administration. 
and they worked very closely and the, and the administration turned to the alumni organization just to help them fundraise and that's what they became all about and uh, so they're all pretty useless organizations in terms of protecting the things that we feel like need to be protected and that's why so many groups at WNL, UVA, and VMI have all come together with our traditions and the things that we value are all under assault uh, to form our own organizations. And we're, our goal, at least, I, mean, I can't speak for anybody else, but it doesn't sound like, I, I think you are all the same as us, is not to supplant or replace these traditional alumni organizations. They certainly have value. But our goal is to do something and do things that they cannot or will not do. And uh, so you've reached that conclusion. WNL, they have an organization called the General's Readout. Uh, they've reached that conclusion, and so have we at UVA. Now, I don't need to tell you what your issues are. You <laughs> you're very familiar with them. But let me just give you a little background about WNL and UVA. Um, WNL, they've got a very woke, progressive uh, president there uh, who wants to change the. Uh, change the nature of the university and uh, uh, to the extent that they want to change the name of WNL they want to get rid of Lee and uh, the Lee with WNL and who knows I mean Washington heck, he was a slaveholder too so I mean who knows what they're gonna end up with uh, the the guys everybody at WNL recognizes that yeah Lee you get he he fought for the Confederacy and against the Union, and he, and he fought to uphold slavery. So uh, he may have had very ambiguous uh, or very ambivalent views about slavery, but, you know, uh, in today's tenor, there are things about him that, that, uh, that, we all, that are held against him. Uh, but they also to remember that he was a man of tremendous honor, tremendous integrity. He stood for martial martial virtues and, 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 and virtues of integrity and, uh, and, and things that are in scarce commodity today. He also uh, helped save the university from, from, from ruin and he uh, uh, was played a crit critical role in reuniting the Confederacy with the, with the United States and, uh, and, and, and reconciling the two. And so he has, there's aspects of him that are very much worth appreciating. And the, the, uh, the generals read out, they want to protect that legacy. When they, they want to protect uh, that, uh, the, everything, that, that, the, the good things that Lee stands for without canceling him. And like, like you guys and like the Jefferson Council, there are certain traditions. The honor, the honor system is very strong at the WNL. And uh, uh, free expression, free speech. Uh, the battle against the uh, the campus totalitarians; those are all things that they're, they're that they're doing and standing for. At UVA, um, we w the spark went off about last uh, October or so, when one of our alumni uh, went uh, went to the lawn, visited the lawn, and as you know, the lawn is very is a world heritage site, and it's a um, architectural gem and masterpiece, and should be treated with reverence and respect and uh, the people who live in the lawn are given a great honor to be able to be allowed to live in the lawn and uh, I remember when I was there many moons ago I, um, I applied to get a lawn I didn't get accepted so I never uh, I was never cool enough to, to do that but it is a great honor and a young woman by the name of uh, Hira Azer uh, and you probably some of you have heard this story they they she pinned up on in very big bold letters uh, F U V A except she didn't say F she spelled it out and then she gave a list of a bill of particulars about how why U V A was so terrible and awful and so Bert Ellis who was a very successful uh, entrepreneur who is uh, uh, Spending a lot of time in Charlottesville now, and because it is kind of a retirement era, retirement years, he saw this. He was absolutely outraged, and he communicated to President Jim Ryan, and basically got, got a lot of blah blah woof woof, you know, uh, run around, run around. Oh, we got to protect and honor her, her, her freedom of speech. Uh, we can't, you know, if we crack down on her, then you know, uh, blah, you know, just a million reasons why they couldn't do anything. Well, meanwhile. 
uh, you won't believe, you can't believe, I can't imagine anything like this goes on at VMI, but the, the hostility uh, and the intolerance t towards uh, impermissible views is really, really intense at UVA. I mean, there are uh, uh, professors who they use the wrong word, and I'm just talk not just talking about the N word. Uh, I'm talking about you know uh, just because the definition of words that you can't use kind of changes and morphs every day, so you can't even keep up with it. At the same, t you know, and uh, campus there's a s number of small campus groups, uh, Young Americans for Freedom. Uh, that, that go out there and try to make their voices heard and uh, the power of social media is, is aimed at them and they are bullied and harassed online relentlessly and uh, the administration seems to have given no thought or care whatsoever to protecting their right to free expression. It all goes one way. So we've been, we've kind of got together and we got a, and we just saw the continued leftward drift uh, I can't imagine. I, I can't imagine anything like this has a, has occurred at VMI yet. But take a look at UVA and, and WNL to see what could happen when you get the wrong people in charge, uh, the wrong administration, the wrong deans, and the, who all then begin influencing. You know the faculty hires, and they all have to hew the line uh, ideologically. So those are things that, that, uh, that we're dealing with and get, get, gave rise to us. Uh, we had a number of, we got s several hundred alumni have publicly committed to withhold their donations and uh, it amounts to, I'm not sure exactly where this figure comes from, but it's one that's batted around $300 million in bequeathed to donations or promised donations. So that's enough to get people to pay, at least pay attention. Um, now, what WNL and UVA are a little bit different from VMI because the threats from WNL and UVA come from within. It's our own presidents, it's our own boards of tra uh, visitors, it's our own faculties and deans who are like uh, r running it into the ground. Uh, you, I'm, I'm, I guess you guys have somewhat. Uh, ambivalent uh, feelings about your uh, some of the things that your uh, Board of Visitors done but my sense is they are just dealing with the reality that uh, if they don't make significant uh, uh, symbolic gestures that uh, or some of them are substantive but if they don't make significant gestures um, the Democrats and in the legislature and Ralph Northam will yank their money or apply intense, painful fiscal pressure uh, until they get what they want. So, uh, but so with the threat for you guys is from the outside right now. Uh, what you need to make sure is that it doesn't become a threat from the inside as well to just fundamentally transform VMI into something that it is not or has never been. So. Recognizing that uh, each institution uh, faces somewhat different challenges, but we're all in this together. Uh, we all face certain commonalities in our challenges as well. And uh, I think there's some kinds of things that we can do. Uh, and I throw them out there. The th ideas I'm throwing out may not be applicable to VMI, uh, but we can all learn from each other. And I know that uh, I'm on the board of the Jefferson Council, and I know the other board members are very interested, very keen on establishing a cooperative relationship with you guys and staying in touch and learning from what you're doing and seeing what works for you and uh, sharing with what works for us. And we hear the same thing with, uh, with WNL as well. Uh, the first set, the first challenge I think is up to everybody to do, and I see in the statement that Matt gave today uh, that you are well on the way to doing this, and that is establishing a set of positive principles. It's not enough just to be against all the craziness. I mean, there's lots of crazy, and that's what gets people revved up and gets, you know, foaming at the mouth. I know it gets me foaming at the mouth, and that's what I write an awful lot about, about how crazy it all is. But if you're going to convert people and bring people over to your side who aren't already there, you have to stand for something positive. And so 
at the Jefferson Council, we've kind of for, uh, identified four basic themes. One is we preserve the Jeffersonian legacy. Thomas Jefferson was a great man. I'm sorry he had his flaws. He was a product of his time, but he was a great man. He advanced the cause of freedom for everybody. Sorry, I get kind of emotional. Uh, the next thing is to preserve the integrity and the dignity of the lawn and the rotunda, which is a world heritage masterpiece, architectural masterpiece. We defend the honor code. Once upon a time, UVA valued the honor code like uh, VMI did. It has really fallen, fallen on hard times. There are fewer and fewer people are charged with honor offenses, and uh, uh, it's um, it just not the administration. We used to, when I went there, gosh, back in 71, I mean, the, in, the introduction we got to the honor code was impressed upon us, was so strong. It was inculcated. Everybody believed in it. Everybody talked about it. When it and, 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 and it was fundamental. And uh, we just kind of took it for granted that it was always going to be like that, but isn't. And uh, the honor code is still giving lip service, but uh, not nearly the same attention. So we defend that. And finally, and this, is, this applies across the board everywhere, is to promote intellectual diversity, fight the intellectual monoculture, which is increasingly uh, far leftist, and protect freedom of speech and freedom of expression. So that's what we stand for, and those are the causes that we're backing. The, the next thing that we need to do, and I can see you obviously are talking about doing this as well and uh, have made some progress in this area, and that is to set up your own communication channels. Here is the fundamental reality that we are dealing with in, in the world today. The mainstream media does not care about us. In fact, the mainstream media, as you know better than anybody, is actively hostile to what you believe in. And uh, so you're never going to get a fair shake. I mean, you can try, you can do your best. Uh, maybe sometimes you can share them, you know, shame them into, into running an op-ed piece or maybe quoting you in a story and you're down there in the 10th paragraph in a story that is basically negative and, and uh, you, you can say, no, I don't beat my wife. I mean, okay, great. That's kind of best, about the best you can hope. You got to establish your own communications channels. Now I know there's that uh, 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 Facebook and Twitter. I mean, I think that you, uh, I understand that you guys are real active on that, and uh, that's great. That is one set of channels, uh, but uh, it's not enough. You need to uh, you need to establish your own websites. You need to establish newsletters. You need to put out videos. Uh, you need to do research you need to create storylines you've got to build narratives it takes a lot of work that's what you got to do you got to, you got to seize command of it and use the alternative media because you know the mainstream media won't do it another thing you got to do is learn where are the pressure points every university is structured a little bit different but it, uh, public universities so UVA and VMI have a lot more in common, say, than WNL as a private university. Um, how is it structured? Who makes the decisions? Where are the pressure points? And in, in, in who are the influencers? The UVA, uh, the Univ Virginia's university system is a decentralized system. Each university is governed by its own independent board of directors. It cannot be dictated to directly. There is a coordinating agency called the State Council uh, of higher education for Virginia, which has some influence and uh, mainly kind of acts to kind of uphold certain standards and collect information and data and prevent duplication and things like that. Uh, but uh, so that's something you need to be aware of. Obviously, you're state fund. We're, you're partially state funded, so the legislator enters the picture and provides public support for for uh, for education. Or provides fine the state provides financial aid and assistance. The state provides uh, um, bond capacity for when you want to build a new building or something like that. You go through the state and you get better interest rates. Those are all things that you need to understand, and you need so you don't under who has the power to do what. 
Uh, you go beyond the, the state structures and you have the Board of Visitors. Um, all members of the Board of Visitors are appointed by governors. And uh, I think it, it, they're not appointed all by all at once. They kind of rotate on a, a couple new, new people each year. Uh, that's why it is important to win someone who is friendly as a governor because he's the one who's going to appoint the boards of visitors. Uh, the boards of visitors themselves, um, they particularly, I, my sense is that they're, they're actually kind of ambivalent. They're, the people at UVA I talked to, and I'm sure it's true at VMI, are not entirely happy the way things are going. They feel like a balancing act. They've got to an answer to the governor and the legislature. They're acutely aware of those pressures. Uh, at the same time, they've got to ba balance all the internal constituencies within the university. And that's one of the things that we, we alumni have to figure out. Who are those internal constituencies? We're naive. We've all just been, you know, going to, uh, to football games and basketball games and, and tailgate parties and alumni reunions. And, you know, we've never felt a need to find this out and figure out where the pressure points are. And that's what you have to start doing. And if you, the more you find out, the more intelligently you can target your efforts. Um, of course, the most important thing of all is follow the money. <laughs> uh, follow the money is that, again, that's the legislature and alumni contributions. Um, and that's, those are huge pressure, pressure points. And uh, find out. Uh, how are the university presidents, in presidents incentivized? Now, it's probably a very different situation at VMI than it is at UVA. UVA's president gets paid nearly a million dollars a year, and he has a contract that he will get pays him a bonus depending on what kind of metrics he's able to achieve. Well, if you can find out what those metrics are, find out what, you know, what's driving him, and if those metrics are something that you as an alumni organization can influence, like, um, one of his metrics is we want to see a 10% increase in, in, in donations and contributions from our, our alumni. Well, that's something you can have a say about. And uh, so you're not just putting in pressure on, uh, on the institution. You're putting a pressure on the big guy. So uh, general wins may be a very different case. I don't know. But, uh, again, it helps to know, you know, what, 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 what he responds to. The final thing I would say, uh, oh, well, two more things. One is dig, dig dig create narratives dig find stories uh, the media is not going to do the digging for you the media is only interested in doing one thing they were advanced they're interested in advancing their own narrative about racial and 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 sex and sexual injustice uh, at VMI and uh, also v, uh, WNL and UVA uh, undoubtedly, I mean, there's where there's smoke, there is some fire. There are nobody's perfect, as you say. Things do happen. Uh, the question is, how does the inst U VMI respond as an institution to those things? And uh, in your case, since uh, the the enemy is not within, the enemy is without. So you may be de need to do some digging. Uh, with your enemies. So, I mean, just as an example, um, I, won't, I won't mention any names in terms of who tipped me off to some of this, but uh, uh, we found... Uh, well, let's say it got almost the more views than anybody else in the history of uh, ba uh, Bacon's Rebellion, 20,000 page views, and it got on the Drudge Report, and one click in the Dudge, uh, one line in the Drudge Report drove 5,000 people. So uh, it got around. No, it won't. It won't. It will not. It will not. But we got to make we got to make uh, uh, social media and alternative media work as best we can. That's all we got. We're never going to get the we're never going to get the mainstream media. There may be some national publications, and we're looking at. Uh, um, I've got some contacts at the Federalist, and and some of our other guys have contacts at Fox News, and 
So uh, one of the thing, one of the angles that we're pursuing is maybe kind of ginning up. This is bigger than just UVA. It's bigger than just VMI. It's alumni revolt. And alumni rebellion is taking off. It's starting here in Virginia, uh, but it has the potential to spread like wildfire fire throughout the country. Now, if we can get something like that planted, uh, then then uh, we become part of something much bigger. So anyway, dig, 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 find stuff out, create stories and narratives. The final thing is, I would just say, create alliances. And I'm sure that you're all doing this, but um, you know, you've got in uh, who are the internal constituencies within VMI. Uh, you've got faculty, administrators, and staff. Uh, the guys at the top, they are restricted in what they can say and do. I mean, they have certain realities, uh, very limited parameters they can move in within. But uh, you've got maybe faculty members who do stuff, maybe some got some sources uh, in the upper middle staff. Uh, students know a lot. They can tell you. There's a lot of information you can find. And um, one of the things I found is that as an alumni, alumnus at UVA, I knew nothing. The, all I knew is what I got read in UVA today, which is the official house propaganda organ of the Ryan administration, and maybe occasionally looking at the Cavalier Daily, which is a student newspaper totally taken over by the leftists. So, um, uh, we have begun cultivating all these other kinds of sources and figuring out, you know, who can feed us information that can kind of help us further our narratives. And it is, I can't tell you how important the narratives are because we're all revved up, but there's a lot of alumni sitting there out there who don't get it or they haven't heard it or they kind of think, oh, they're, they're just crazy. I can't believe that's true you know whatever so you've, you've got to do that it's important for building the power of your organizations to create those narratives so there's there's no there's no magic formula uh, it's a lot of hard work uh, we, we tr we're all going to try different things and we're going to share best practices so to speak and help one another uh, uh, Matt said it this is uh, not a sprint it's a marathon uh, even if we get a friendly, friendly legislature, even if we get uh, a friendly governor, uh, so many things have been set into motion. Uh, you're still going to have the Washington Post out there. They're not going away. They're going to keep on pounding away at these things. And then even if we win one election, then there's the next election. So uh, it's a long haul battle, uh, and you guys have got to be willing to stick to it for the long haul. And, uh, but again, remember, you have friends. We're going to stick to it for the long haul. And uh, I think this is a movement that can grow. Well, let me give you the example of a guy named Gene Nichols, who was president of uh, William and Mary University, I can't remember, five, six years ago, maybe. And he was a, he was a, a early adapter of, of, of trying to bring all this leftism to, uh, to, to campus. And one of the things he did, the way he triggered the William and Mary alumni, is he removed the Wren Cross from some chapel. I, I don't know women Mary enough to know really why that was about such a big deal, but you know that's like, you know that's like taking down top of st uh, the statue of Thomas Jefferson or Stonewall Jackson or something. So, 
uh, the alumni, women Mary alumni, they ran them out of town. So I'm not sure where he ended up, but I can tell you anytime you're a university president and you get run out of town, it's not going to look bit good in your resume. And, uh, you know, uh, we're kind of back and forth about whether at, 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 uh, uh, in the Jefferson Council about whether we want to actively kind of work to pr get rid of Ryan. Uh, and there's a strong sentiment among a lot of people that we would like to. But right now, I think we're going to tr uh, we're going to try to be nice guys first. We're going to try to work with him and see if that goes anywhere, accomplishes anything. If it doesn't, then uh, he's going to have a hell of a fight on his hands. Uh, and I suspect that uh, that Dudley w uh, Washington Lee will have a hell of a fight as on his hands. So you know, uh, it, in the past, there never were consequences. But if you have strong, active alumni organizations, there can be. Um, we just made some very um, prelim preliminary uh, kind of gestures uh, at, uh, at the Jefferson Council. We have just, just literally within the last month, have gotten our 501c3 uh, status, and we've our focus has been mainly really in, uh, internally focused. Uh, but uh, I mean, there's been discussions about creating a new committee, kind of a liaison committee, to be able to kind of make those kind of connections with other people. So I think that uh, as as time goes by and we uh, we kind of start building ourselves institutionally, that that's going to be high on the list. Anybody else? Well, look, thank you so much, guys. It's a real pleasure to be here. So I'll take the opportunity real quickly first to, uh, to give Jim a poker chip. <laughs> so it's the uh, first So everybody should have one of those, but this is one specifically for us. It was the first one that came out of the package. So thank you very much for that, for, for what you've done. And, and a piece of Be Mine artwork oh my gosh. That, uh, that we signed and, and, uh, and, and give to, to Jim. Um, it basically shows all the different sort of domains at, uh, at BMI. We would like him to, uh, to have that. It's a 2020 version, but that's okay. It's a couple years ago. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support. Thank you all for being So, uh, uh, ladies and gents, so probably during this talk, you might have you might have developed more questions about our own uh, political action committee and uh, and opinions. Uh, can, and if, and can, if I can get all of the members of the PAC who are here tonight with us. Uh, up here with me, so Mark and Quinn and Sharif and uh, Jeff and Jake and who am I? Uh, Hugh and Marty and Kyle. If you guys can all come up here, and maybe we can answer. If I'm missing anybody, then let me know. But uh, we'll answer some questions um, that you may have. If anybody has any more questions, but these these are the guys, that, and it's about half the team. Uh, the other half is not able to make it with us tonight. As, as we talked about, but uh, these are the guys that, that we meet weekly. We're on the phone. Uh, we have an agenda. Jake's, Jake runs the, uh, the meetings for us and makes sure that we stay on target and hit our meeting agendas and holds people accountable for what they have as far as their projects and, and, and whatnot. So um, uh, all those different uh, disciplines are covered within the meeting group. But I know that you must have other questions, one or two more questions before we eat all the chicken or give it you know, back to, to, uh, to Lee's chicken and drink all the beer that's in the place. But please, ask us some, some, uh, some questions about what it is you'd like to see or what it is we're doing or not doing. So, yes, sir.
Yeah, so, so, so thank you. And the question was, has, has the VMI, the Spirit of VMI PAC, reached out to the other like uh, groups that uh, Jim Bacon was just referring to? Um, so we do have active participation, uh, not specifically as the PAC, but as individuals that are penetrating in and working with members of, that are either on those groups or in those groups or represent those groups. So I know, Jake, you, have, you know people from uh, Jefferson's... Uh, Jefferson's Council and also General Cadell. Yep. So Debbie Nell has, uh, has competing groups, if you will. They have multiple entities that are dealing with the issues central to WNL. So I'm in touch with two of the groups for WNL um, that are for, predominantly for maintaining Washington and Lee as Washington and Lee as you would understand it. Uh, then there are other groups that want to affect varying degrees of change. And then I'm also in touch with representatives from Jefferson Council. So yes, now it's not a formal thing right now. It's, I, uh, you know, some, some um, you know, phone calls, telecons, and, and a lot of email exchanging, but we're not organized as, as one group or as sort of a coalition of three groups yet. But as Jim mentioned, you know, it is probably a path for us to certainly look into, especially if we can broaden it for and include other universities that have the same sort of issues uh, for alumni groups. So, and, and I, there's a, uh, uh, one, one of my POCs is a uh, staff uh, advisor for the Generals Redoubt. Uh, so we keep in, in touch and talk about the happenings, goings on with them. Not a formal arrangement yet, but I think maybe that's in the cards as we, as we go along. And I was just gonna say, everyone, make sure you go to baconsrebellion.com. I, I, I can't, no, that, you're being very modest. The, they have been the leading on the leading edge of every one of the stories that have come out of either in the post or any of uh, the news that has come out about VMI. So you got to support them and just spread that like a virus. And I'm serious. And I'll just say one other thing. I think what we're running into here as someone who lives in between um, uh, most of the folks here are in the class of 85. Matt's class of 85. He's founded the organization. I'm 88. I'm about three years younger. But that is the demarcation point between folks who are care about newspapers and the old technology versus new, right? And we got to get new in order to be effective. And I'm not just saying that as a cliche, that's real, right? If you look at the number of subscribers to any social media today, uh, talk about Facebook, P Facebook's fallen off. They're censoring everybody. No one wants to be subject to that. I'll give you just one little, couple little anecdotes. Um, I think that will really resonate. If you go to off-brand media, uh, there's a guy named Tim Poole, just a guy, used to work uh, at some of the mainstream media. He does a daily stream. He gets 30,000 live people on that stream, right? Uh, Pat McAfee, he's just a sports guy. He used to punt for the Indianapolis Colts. During the, um, during the, the NFL draft, he was doing 125,000 live streams on YouTube. Right, so social media matters, and that's why you will not hear a peep about it from all the other folks out there. CNN, CBS, ABC, they're dying. And maybe they're not dying fast enough, but they are. Just keep that in mind, right? This is real. We are at a demarcation point, how the internet changed, how we traded information, how we distribute it in the broad sense across the mass media is huge right now. Uh, video and, and, and social media, et cetera. So just keep that in mind, right? Um, that's huge, and, and don't always listen to everything that you hear. This thing could collapse on them tomorrow. And just keep that in mind. So support baconsrebellion.com in a big way. We're spinning up our media presence at thespiritofemi.org. We have a YouTube channel, we have a Facebook page. But hey, man, there's out there, there's Rumble, there's a whole bunch of other medias, media sources that are out there for y'all to browse. But again, spread it and make sure we, uh, we keep the momentum. Thanks so much, Jim our communications guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Gordon.
So, so the question from Courtney, Courtney is whether or not we will be reaching out to current cadets uh, regarding what it is that we do. Uh, we do post on social media that any cadets can see family, friends, uh, and those sorts of things. Um, the direct uh, connection with, I don't foresee us reaching out directly to current uh, cadets. Uh, I do see that there is a new publication that, um, where, where, where's Bob? Bob oh, oh, there's Bob. Uh, the, the VMI Cadet newspaper that I worked on and I think Jake worked on and, and a lot of us worked on when we were cadets somehow died around 2017. And uh, was it 2017, Bob? 2016. Uh, and so my son who just graduated in 2020 never really got to experience the VMI Cadet like we all got to experience it back in the day with the with the dart board and the, you know, just a, a great, uh, a great uh, uh, steam uh, off blower, I guess uh, is a good way to put it. Uh, um, There's a uh, forum. There's a forum for cadets to talk about life within the institute. Right. So that I think is uh, so. We have the first issue that that Hugh just held up, and uh -huh. hopefully that will be a forum that we're able to share information. Uh, in a way that the cadets can consume in, in a good way. I think it might be a little dangerous for us to go directly to the cadets when they're in school. So Bob, are they, are they planning on possibly, I know back in the day, you, you could subscribe to it as a parent and also read it to kind of get some insights into what was going on. So uh, is that a, po a potential? Uh, yes. Uh, well, the plan right now is that we're going to go into uh, some special publications, uh, matriculation issues, some of the others. The important thing right now is that <coughs> it's not supported by the Institute. Um, I want to make sure everybody understands it's not endorsed by the Institute in any way. Uh, and so what we hope to do is eventually uh, turn it over so it is the voice of the cadets and alumni as it was in 1907, and then it will go back to a weekly publication uh, run by cadets with a faculty advisor, and that's a very important point, is that uh, one of the issues over the years was it came under direct supervision. And so uh, there's a big difference between supervision and, uh, and faculty advising, and we want to get it back to that. So everyone will be able to subscribe to it. It eventually will go in the near future, uh, thanks to, and I have to do a shout out to the alumni, uh, because that commencement issue that you just saw was 100% funded by alumni. Uh, I want to thank the PAC because they took out a full page ad which helped us get it out to all the cadets. Would not have been possible without that. Uh, and so it, uh, eventually in the next couple of weeks you're going to see it come out as a really high class online publication with a web page similar to the, what the New York Times has, with the, with what the uh, Richmond Times Dispatch has with some papers in Northern Virginia, kind of like a Harry Potter thing, the paper that shall not be named. And um, it'll come out, it'll be a very high class publication to link alumni with cadets to mentor them in journalism. And everybody will be able to subscribe to that and it'll be, it'll have a lot of articles. Those of you who haven't seen it, uh, there's some paper copies over here. We also have some digital copies that you can get online and take a look at it. Cadets did a really great job with it. So yeah, they'll be able to get into that. Awesome, great. thanks, thanks Bob. Any more questions? Yes sir, Julian. Evening. Evening. I'm really proud to be a graduate of the Virginia Military Institute. 
it means a lot to, to all of us. And we share the common sentiment is we are not being portrayed accurately in the media. VMI is relevant, it means a lot, and sometimes things get taken the wrong way. We live in America. America was racist for a long time, and I've experienced it. I've been called a nigger. I've been spit at. My first uh, memory of it was on a playground in kindergarten when I was playing with a couple white kids and their mother showed up and said, don't play with him, we don't play with them. And it didn't really strike too much with me that day, but it hit me years later. And it's never really bothered me because I know that I'm more than just the color of my skin. And so yeah, I've experienced it, but did I experience it at VMI? No. Do I believe it happened at VMI? Hell yes, we're in America. It's happened, it's happened, but how are we gonna handle it and move forward? And we can't ignore it. We can't turn a blind eye to it. And for so long, that's what we did. And that's why we are where we are today. And now we're been a, the world got put on pause with COVID. We saw how the police officers treated people that just happened to have a darker shade of skin, because we're all Americans. I don't believe in race. I don't believe in none of that stuff. I just, I'm just like you, I'm just like you. I just happen to have a permanent tan <laughs> that helps protect me from the sun a little bit better. But uh, we, we saw that things do, do happen that shouldn't. And we gotta come together and not fight one another. The commonality that we all share is that we all love VMI, we share the honor code, we share this higher sense of purpose and honor that we cannot let the media, the Washington Post divide us. That's the worst thing we can do right now is to turn our backs on one another. Now, I'm not a political advocate or anything along those lines. I just know that we have got to remove this wedge of divisiveness that it's gonna, it's gonna backfire on us. We have to work together, we have to come together, we have to unify, we have to strive for diverse representation, inclusion, so we can have varying points of view. Because what is the most important thing to us when it comes to VMI? It's preserving the honor and her future. And that's, that's, that's the important thing, because we want VMI to continue to be that darling of the state because she has been for so long and she will continue to be as long as we continue to stay strong and unify. We can't, we can't be over here talking about it and over here and have our little sex and be separated. We have to combine our strength, our resources that we have and become that juggernaut of the state and our nation. We're all citizen soldiers. I mean, I love VMI so much, and I know there are a lot of people that want to tear us down, and they look, they look for any, any chink in the armor, and we cannot, we, can, we can't help them. We cannot help them, and I know we won't. We're going to come together as VMI men, women, and people that love VMI, support VMI, and the honor code and the traditions that we hold true because we're not you know the confederate history that we're tied to and it's that's that's not the principles that vmi stands for and yeah there was some change that had to happen i read a long time ago that sometimes you got to lose a battle to win a war and i believe general p was a good man he was my superintendent while i was there but he fell on the sword he lost his battle for us so that we could move into the future and become stronger as a whole and hopefully Major General Wins is that man to lead us into that next generation of thinking and take us to that next level. Let's stay together, let's stay the course, and the Alumni Association, they're working their butts off. They're working their butts off. They got it coming from every which direction, and I've gotten a piece of it in emails here and there. We can't attack the folks that are on the front line 
trying to save the integrity of the institute and and protect her honor so let's let's come together let's talk to the alumni association let's talk to the board of visitors let's talk let's just talk and communicate we don't need to reinvent the wheel we just need to communicate with one another and get back to what it is that we do best and that's lead and so I'm thankful that we all got together tonight and we're able to share some things with one another and I, I just look forward to continuing this marathon like like you know Nipsey Hussle said the marathon can tips it like the marathon continues and it will and I look forward to sharing that journey with each and every one of you and I truly believe in my heart that VMI will be better tomorrow with all the women and men that love and support her. So that's all I have to say. Yeah. Any more questions or yes, ma'am? Well, I, I, I think that we're going to have to see. So the question is, what's the action plan? So a, a mother of a 2023 uh, uh, cadet, and the question is, when the audit comes out somewhere around Monday-ish, uh, maybe before, uh, what is the action plan? I think the action plan right now is to wait and see what it says, um, and then take stock in what it is that VMI is uh, – planning to do to respond to it uh, as far as because it, with with the uh, audit results will also come recommendations and so what the audits we can't do anything about what the audit says and we really can't do anything about the recommendations or how VMI responds to those uh, necessarily what we are founded to do is to uh, be able to affect the legislators if they force action on on vmi so we have to take stock in in what that is and again it's a it, like julian said and like we said before it's it's a marathon and we're waiting for this next chip to fall to figure out where to go next as far as what actions to take so uh, i would wait for that audit to come out hold your nose and then um, i'm sure that we'll be we'll be uh, we'll be talking well we we well, the, they'll, the, the alumni association, alumni agencies will post the audit results, um, and at least as much as what is consumable and what they can, what they can post. So um, I think that'll be readily available. If not, then we'll reach out and we'll post how to find where to get those results from. Yeah, yeah. So, so the question was how, how, do, how do we find out? Right, okay, well, not, okay. I think, ladies and gents, we're reaching about the end of our time, of our, uh, our closing time here. Uh, without any other, you know, fall away jumpers, if you will, I think we'll go ahead and, and close up. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I know he's probably nervous. Um, I just want to say the reason why we want to preserve the VMI institution is because of what Julian just did. Okay, everybody in here that's been through the school, male and female, VMI produces people that this state and this country and this world need. And it's amazing. That's why we're preserving this institution. And it's, it's no short order. Just like Julian professed right there, and we all can stand here and do it, it is not about color, it's not about race, it's not about creed, it's not about religion. It is about what's right and integrity and leadership. And Julie and I just, we're not giving you enough kudos tonight. That was ballsy, buddy. It's awesome to have you here tonight. Thank you for coming in and saying we've got to have more blacks. We've got to have more people of color, whatever. We've got to have that in this organization and that are, that are supporting VMI and going to be outwardly spoke, spoken and speak outwardly because that is right now because of the attack, that's the credible issue. And so... 
and so we keep on just keep on store and on point that the that it is the VMI system that's producing citizen soldiers that this country needs and I think that's the message that we've got to take forward and take out um, and this just a couple of the points mainstream media it so it frustrates me so much to think that we're actually still referring to the mainstream media as the mainstream media we got to make that paradigm flip we're the mainstream media and we're going to be the mainstream media and where they're going to be like it was suggested a little bit a little bit ago that they just are diluted so much and fall by the wayside I believe that our philosophy is the majority in America and we've got to be sure that that's elevated and raised to the top and it's based in the truth and integrity and honesty and and equality for all men and women in, in, in the United States and one of the question one of the thing to address as far as the current cadets at school goes you know Matt's just graduated but mine's here tonight so he's I'm introducing him to the issues as we've been going and have him here tonight with me he's a rising first classman on the regimental staff I'm extremely proud of him Yep, Noah. That rascal got him a three a three year scholarship in the army and is going cyber security and had a stellar career ahead of himself. So and that's because of VMI. It's because of support of the alumni, supporting the school. And I couldn't do that by myself and he can do that by himself. So uh, but he's going places now that many, many, many of his peers have no hope of going, but because of the uh, institution and the and the leg up that uh, the VMI system gives it. And that is the real reason I'm fighting and part of PAC and excited about this is to sal salvage the training institution that develops leaders in America and the citizen soldier. And that's really, that's really what VMI is about. And Matt, I just want to kudos to Matt and Jake and the team. Um, these guys, I told them, I said, I can't do as much work, guys, but, I, but I'm going to be your cheerleader. So we were challenged about six years ago to one of our, our reunions. Uh, you know, um, our RDC president said, you guys are – pretty sharp uh, I challenge you to do something great for VMI and this came along last year and it and and we felt like it was 85's call to step up however it's not an 85 organization it's not limited 85 85 was done all we've done is jumped in and created uh, a platform to be built upon and the any alumni of any class and any organization any EP peoples or bodies outside of VMI are welcome and encouraged to get behind the pack and the movement and what I also believe is that it's it is going to have an effect nationally I think our this pack um, not intentionally but not by mission but I think just its purpose and the effects it's going to have is going to help be another catalyst to um, flipping the paradigm in America to where we know where it is we just got to get our voice louder than what is used to be a few minutes ago the mainstream media which is no longer right thank you except for Clint Hubbard we don't want Clint Hubbard <laughs> <laughs> right. So, barring anything else, thank you very much for your time and attention. Please tip your waiters and waitresses, go back and get some beer, uh, eat the chicken that's over here, and uh, thank you very much for coming. We look forward to hearing from you.